What's up guys, Nathan here. Today I wanna to teach you the simple cash game strategy that skyrocketed my winnings. I think it'll help you out too, so let's jump right into it. All right guys, so this simple cash game strategy really, really improved my winnings at the poker table. And if you play tournaments, I think this will help you out as well. It's just something that anyone can learn to do and I'm going to walk you through it step-by-step step in this video to show you exactly how this works. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about learning how to hand read versus the tighter players. And I'm gonna focus just on the tighter players in today's video, but learning how to hand read versus all five main poker player types is just as important. I talk about this in detail in my free poker cheat sheet, which will be the top link in the description below. But the five main poker player types that you need to know are the knit, tag, lag, whale, and maniac. Tag stands for tight and aggressive, lag stands for loose and aggressive, but today we're gonna focus on the knit, who is the tightest player at the table. This is the player who is sitting around, you've probably seen them waiting for their aces or their kings, or their ace king or whatever, waiting for the big hand. They never seem to be involved in a pot unless they have the nuts, AKA the best hand possible. Once you learn how to understand how this player type views the game, we can develop develop a custom strategy tailored around maximizing our winnings versus this player type and also minimizing our losses versus this player type when we have the second best hand. Let's jump into an example right now to help illustrate all of this better for you. All right, so you're playing a cash game, $1, $2 blinds, you are dealt ace jack offsuit in the big blind and a knit raises to $10 from the button. What should you be doing in a spot like this? Well guys, the crucial thing to know in a situation like this is that knits have a tight range in this situation. And yes, even when they raise from the button. Remember, knit, tightest player at the table, they're not screwing around. Now, when they open raise from the button, we know that all player types are going to have their widest range. They're going to be trying to steal the blinds, of course, and therefore it only makes sense to play some more speculative hands, like maybe a jack-10 suited or, or maybe an ace-5 suited, something like that. However, we still need to remember that nits are not screwing around most of the time. They're probably only playing around the top 20% of their hands even when it's folded to them on the button. So what does all this mean? It means that we want to proceed with caution in this situation. I think that we should be mostly flatting in this situation, flat calling. And I think from time to time, we should mix in some three bets, AKA re-raising in this situation. I don't think with the hand as strong as ace-jack offsuit in a late position battle like this that we should ever be folding. I think our hand is simply too strong for that. So in this situation, we decide to just call and the flop comes down with the ace of clubs, eight of diamonds, and four of hearts. We decide to check here and the knit makes his standard continuation bet in a spot like this. All right, so what should we be doing in a spot like this, guys? Well, I think we should just be calling in a spot like this. Once again, it goes back to understanding that this is the tightest player at the table, that they're not screwing around, that they're probably only playing good aces in this situation, and maybe some other pocket pairs, basically strong hands. So there's not a lot of benefit for us to be raising in a spot like this because they just simply don't have very many bluffs in their range. But just like preflop, we have a hand that is strong enough that there's no sense in folding either. So when you're in a situation like this where there's not really much benefit with raising and our hand is too strong to be folding, this is a situation where just calling makes the most sense. Let's go see the turn. So the turn comes down with a 10 of diamonds. We decide to check again and the knit makes another bet in this situation. So guys, at this point, this is where alarm bells should be going off in your head. This is the heart and soul of hand reading in cash games is understanding your player type in a situation like this versus the tightest player at the table and the most passive player as well. The knit is also the most passive player. This is the kind of player who is not screwing around around here. Now versus the other four player types, the tag, leg, whale, and maniac, we would often play this much different. This is something that I talk about in my brand new Elite Poker Training University.
University. I have hundreds and hundreds of hand history examples walking you step by step through how to play hands like this versus all five different player types because guys this is where you really learn to use your hand reading in cash cams to develop a different strategy versus each player type but yes versus the tightest player at the table we need to be asking ourselves here what is this player raising preflop betting the flop and then still betting the turn again here with and guys the answer is something that beats our ace jack in this spot we need to look at this board again and analyze this player's range and ask ourselves what hand are we actually even beating at this point remember we already talked about how this player is really only playing strong aces like ace king down to maybe ace eight maybe they're playing a couple broadways like a king queen some pocket pairs some stuff like that we're not really doing well against any of these hands guys number one we can't beat any real ace at this point i mean we can beat i guess ace nine you have to ask yourself is this player even going to be double barreling remember nits are also pretty passive so often they'll just check that hand here on the turn we can't beat ace king can't beat ace queen we can't beat ace 10 now and we can't beat ace eight. If this player has some sort of Broadway hand like a king queen or a king jack, that hand did pick up a gut shot straight draw now. But again, Nitz, passive player, they're probably just going to check behind here on the turn and take their free river. And any other big pocket pair, pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks, again, probably gonna check back in this situation. Most Nitz as a passive player type are not going to double barrel that hand. And pocket tens is now ahead of us. We definitely expect that hand to be betting again pocket nines will probably check back and pocket eights obviously will bet again so when we put all the pieces of the puzzle here together this is just a fold versus this kind of player type and this is really what i'm talking about with cash games is just understanding your player type in detail and really what i mean by that is understanding how they think about the game what kind of hands they play and how they are likely to play it on various different board textures one once you learn how to analyze their range versus all five player types just like this, I think you're going to have a lot more success in cash games. So guys, like and subscribe if you found this one helpful. And once again, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. If you want to know my entire strategy versus all five player types, that'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.